Hello, this is Felix from GM Wolf, and today we are going to be covering objects and how they're used within GM Studio. This will be a tutorial for complete beginners to GM Studio, so if you are looking for something more advanced, feel free to check out my other videos. First of all, I think it is important to understand what objects are and how they function. Um, objects are the building blocks of any project. They contain the code and actions carried out by the, the program, and represent the different elements of your game. So, you can think of um, your objects as kind of blueprints of whatever um, element you're adding to a game. For example, you can have your player object um, that will actually contain so the different code, the different code of your object. Maybe the sprites, which are the images that your object will use. It will also have maybe uh, the different elements, for example, if you're using physics and properties of your objects. Um, so once you have set up your object with all the different code, etc., it can then be used in your game. Now, an, an interesting concept with objects is the use of instances. For example, you may want to have uh, enemies in your game, and so you could have a single enemy, maybe a, a, so, a sort of a zombie, or something like that. Um, so you have your zombie object, and it will also contain some code and uh, a sprite, maybe. Um, and it will um, not. Um, I mean, you will want to have more than one zombie in your game. Otherwise, it will be quite uninteresting. And they all actually contain the same code. So it will be kind of stupid to create more than one object for each of your zombies. Instead, you can create something like instances. Um, you can think of it as kind of a blueprint containing um, all the information inside the objects and then you kind of manufacture them and put them everywhere as kind of identical copies but all you know stand alone, they don't depend on each other, they just all depend on a single object. So inside your, your game window you can have a, a multitude of different enemies here, here and there, but they all reference back to this uh, same object over here, and your player object will reference to um, to this object right here. So these are called instances inside the game, and they are the one running the code, and uh, the objects are the one containing the code. Um, another example of this would be if you are using, uh, if you have your player, maybe your player has a gun or something like that, and he would shoot bullets from that gun, right? Uh, and each one of those bullets really behave the same way, but they all are in different positions. This one might have a, a X position, so a horizontal possession of one. This one might have a horizontal tall possession of three. This one might be five, etc., etc. However, they all behave the same way in the fact that they all travel in this general direction uh, depending on where the player shot them at. Um, and so they are all referenced back to the same object containing the code, but these will be different instances. Um, so objects are used uh, for all the different elements in your game, generally speaking. So you would have uh, your, your tree object, if you have trees and your house and walls, etc, etc. So um, inside your object, you will have a bunch of different, um, they, they all contain a bunch of different things. So they will have a, a name, for example, you might have the player name. So this will be kind of what you reference uh, your, um, what you reference your object with. So throughout your whole project, they will have a, an image, uh, which is called a sprite. Uh, so that could be whatever. They'll also contain a bunch of code. And inside GM, uh, Game Maker, your code is actually handled uh, with events to keep them nice and neat. And this is not what I want to do. So that you can actually um, see what they're doing uh, properly. So you might have one event, which is, um, I don't know, the, the click event. The click event. And uh, you know, you want to have some code within your click event, so you can do whatever you want. 
and then you can have another event, maybe your um, destroy event when you get killed, you might want to add some code to do uh, puts up the uh, dev screen or whatever, and then you can have another event which would be uh, the, the step event, which is an event that always takes place, and you may want him to um, point towards your mouse, etc., etc. So let's see how this works within Game Maker. So let me open it up. So here is um, the basic Game Maker window, and as you can see, I already have an object right here. You can create it by clicking this button over here. Let's name it obj underscore ball. It is common use in Game Maker to start all of your resources with um, for objects obj and sprites spr, for example. So, uh, as I said in the beginning of this tutorial, sprites are the images, um, the basic images that a game uses um, that can be displayed onto the screen. So let's create one right now by clicking this little icon up here. As you can see, a new window pops up, and let's call this SPR for sprites underscore ball, because we're creating an object as a ball. So let's edit the sprite and simply create a very small sprite of a ball. Quite simple so far. And you now have your very first ball. Let's center the image so that it, um, it is relative to the center of the ball when we set values, etc. And now inside the object properties of OBJ ball, which we created, we can click on um, this little icon over here and select SPR ball. Now this ball object will have uh, the image of the ball. And if you press OK, uh, you can see everything took place on the left here. Now we can create a room, which is kind of the window of the game. It's where, every, you know, the setting of your game. And we can place the ball object simply by clicking somewhere inside the room. If you have more than one object, you can simply click on this icon, select the object you want, and place it down where you want. And as you can see, if we run the game now using this green arrow icon, I'm waiting for everything to save. Hopefully this will come up. You will have uh, your ball object exactly where you placed it. And as you can see, this window here is exactly what is happening over here. Now that's not very exciting. There isn't much going on. But remember, um, you can put code inside your ball object. So let's click on your ball object over here. And you can add an event. Remember, an event uh, is basically a way to organize your code in different events, really. So let's add one. So add event. And let's go the step event. Now, and the step. The step event is one of the main important events because it happens every single second, every single step. Really, um, a step is kind of every single instance of time. It always happens. Um, and by default, it happens about 30 times per second. So it's quite often you have to keep that in mind when you're actually designing your game. Uh, so for example, in the step event here, we can have the ball um, move to the right. So I am not going to use code in this uh, example. So I'm just going to be using uh, drag and drop because I'll be covering code in the next tutorial. And so you can just drag and drop this move icon over here in the move tab and simply go right and at a speed of let's say 1. This is in pixels per step, remember, and press OK. And now when we run the game, hopefully this won't take as long to um, come up, but what we should see is this ball over here moving towards the right because that's what we told it to do. And here it goes, it's moving towards the right. So as you can see, it's starting to get more interesting. Uh, now, remember I said that you could have more than one instance of an object, and uh, we can do this right here in the room editor. We can add another one, and again, another one. And what we should see happening is all the balls going up in, doing the same behavior, you know, moving to the right, but they're all independent from each other. Um, this one here is higher than this one, and this one is lower, and so we should see um, a difference between the, the two. Uh, the three, which is going to be, um, well, you can see how quickly you can start making interesting um, mechanics using all these different objects. 
and now we have three different balls all moving independent from each other with only one object. So this, uh, I think, is a good way of demonstrating how objects work. Now we could take this uh, a, a ways further. We can now create uh, another object. So let's click, uh, first let's create a new sprite for it. So create a sprite. Uh, we want to create a wall which will happen the right. Um, so create a new sprite and this time we're going to make it 4 480 high because that's the height of a default room. And simply paint the whole thing black because we're not going to get fancy today. There's no need for it. Uh, we're going to rename this SPR underscore wall and create a new object. We can call this object OBJ underscore wall and this will be our object for the wall. So we can simply add a new sprite, SPR wall, and well, we don't really, a wall doesn't really move in real life. I mean, if you look at your wall, it shouldn't be moving. So we're not going to change anything in these actions. I mean, um, a wall was kind of a static object. So we can just press OK. Now in your room, you can now select your wall object from this drop down menu and place it inside your wall room. And so we can place one here and one here. And uh, again, we're using only one object, but we can place two instances of the same object. Now, we do want to have some more uh, things happening. Right now, the balls will continue going to the right and eventually go through the wall because we never said anything about, um, you know, interacting. So if we go in obj underscore ball, we can see that every step we're set telling it to move towards the right. Now, that is not exactly what we want, because we want it to move to the left once it hits this. Now, if you look at this action right here, it actually says start moving in a direction, and in our case, it's towards the right. So we, since it says start moving, you can put it inside the create event. Now, the create event is a special event that only happens once. It happens when this ball is created. Now, um, if we are to create these balls at different times, the create event will, re -hap will happen once again for that ball, but only for that ball. Um, and events are, uh, are independent um, of the object, they're actually dependent on the instance. So uh, if an event happens for this ball, it will not happen for this ball. So let's create change this event right here by pressing change, create event. So this will happen just when the ball is created. Now, this still doesn't make it bounce off the wall. So we want to check when this ball and this box actually, um, uh, when this ball and this wall actually hit each other, uh, when there's a collision. So you want to add an event, collision, OBJ wall. So this will check when the ball is gonna hit the wall. And then we can simply use another of these uh, very simple drag and drop options right here. And we can use a reverse horizontal right here. We can just simply drag and drop it over here and press OK. What this action over here does is um, it will reverse the horizontal direction, which is the direction along this axis right here. Um, so if it's going to the right, it's going to move left. And if it moves to the left, it's going to move right. So you can see how the ball will move over here, hit the wall, and then reverse hit this wall in reverse, etc, etc. And um, the good thing is, as you can see, we have these in different positions, but the events will happen at, the, so the events will happen at different time for different balls. And we can demonstrate this simply by running the game once more. And we should see the balls uh, changing direction at different times. Um, so we can just wait to see this ball hitting this here. And once it does, it will reverse its directions, but the other ones are still moving in the same direction. And um, this means that uh, they are truly independent from each other, even though they all come from the same ball object. So, for example, if you have a... Uh, like, this concept can be kind of hard to explain, to um, grasp sometimes if you're a beginning, a beginner to the object-oriented programming languages, which is what GameMaker is. Um, you can think of uh, objects as kind of the blueprints inside a car factory, and then the car might create, uh, the factory might create loads of different cars out of this same blueprint. But all the cars don't have to all go in the same direction, they don't all have to do the same thing. 
They may all look the same and behave the same way, but they can all be in a different position. So I think this um, explains the concepts of objects pretty well. Um, next time we will be covering how we can uh, use code instead of these drag and drop actions and how it works within Game Maker. Um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you guys next time.